Accord V6. It's a 2000 model year and it's a 3.0 liter. I'm going to show you the timing marks involved in changing the timing belt to make it easier for you when you do yours. You'll notice that I've got these clips on here. So when I put the timing belt on, the way that I do these makes it a lot easier. Uh, to begin with, when I line up the timing marks, I always line them up slightly counterclockwise. Editor's note. Just the front cam one slightly counterclockwise after the belt comes off. This engine rotates clockwise as you look at it. And you can tell because the tensioner brings up all the slack on this side. So all the pulling is going to be on this side of the belt, on the right hand side, and the slack is going to be on the left. That being the case, you can bet that it's going to be pulling the direction it's rotating. It's going to rotate to the right from the top. So what I do is I put it slightly to the left, as I said. I string the belt underneath these two. I clip these on. And when I do these, you can manipulate these with a 17 millimeter open end wrench and make this one go slightly this way or slightly that way. You, there's a little bit of wiggle room, basically, uh, that you can put that on. Now, people are going to be worried about the valves hitting the pistons and all that kind of stuff. This is a specific position that you line this up in. Now, if you don't know where the position is, you can look on the camshaft pulley. That number one is where you should line this up before you take the old belt off. If you've got a broken timing belt, then you just kind of got to limp it around and feel it by braille. If you feel like the piston and valves are hitting, stop. But that little mark should line up with the mark on the inside timing cover. If you look closely, you can see there's an indentation here. And there's also a groove right there behind that white paint. If I take the light off, you can see the groove in the paint there. On the opposite cam wheel, you can see the indentation a little better. And you can see my white paint where that little bump is right here. And I put white paint on the tooth itself. It makes it a lot easier to line this one up to this one. You can see that the timing marker indentation here at the bottom of the screen is on the middle of the tooth pretty much. So if you go over the top and make a white mark there, it's closer, it's easier to reference that, especially if you're at an angle like the one on the back of the engine by doing it this way. If we go past the brakes into the wheel well, you can see the crank pulley back here. This crank pulley, if you look close, you can see that there's an arrow cast into the oil pump that corresponds with the drive pulley. If I bring the light sideways a little, you can see the indentation here. That's top dead center uh, for number one as well as whatever's on the opposite end of the firing stroke. The crankshaft has to move two times for every one time the camshaft rotates in order to have that multiplier by two to make it go from a two-stroke engine to a four-stroke engine. At this point, I'd like to draw your attention to the slack on the left side and the tautness or tightness of the belt on the right. The alignment key or woodruff key on the drive pulley or the drive sprocket is pointing up toward that same arrow. Um, you may find other markings. You can see somebody else has some markings here and here in orange. And I've just tagged them out of habit. You know, just re-tagging marks all in white to show that I did it. But those are for doing timing and adjusting valves. If you go above that crank pulley, you can see the tensioning pulley and the tensioning pulley arm, as well as that tensioner. So the tensioner doesn't always have that bracket on. All the slack when you put the new belt on should be on there. That's the very last pulley that you put the belt on. The first pulley would be the camshaft above it and clip it, run underneath the water pump, and then back up to the other pulley. Clip that one, make sure that it's nice and tight, there's no slack whatsoever, and then run the belt around the idler pulley here, and then down around the crank here. You notice between the crankshaft position sensor and the belt, there's a little bit of a gap. If you use a little piece of plastic or a bent credit card or something and shove that in there, that'll hold your belt until you can get the rest of the stuff on. Don't even worry about putting the belt over the pulley until you absolutely have to. This tensioner is a little different in that it bolts on at the back of it. A lot of tensioners, like the ones that you see from Toyota, they always have the bolts close to where the force is being applied. These are kind of backwards. They've got the bolts on that tensioner device clear at the very back of it. You see there? So you want to make note of that when you go to put the new one in. There's also an extra bolt hole that's next to the bolt here that's for the timing cover. So make sure you don't try to line it up wrong and create yourself a bunch of hassle that you don't have to. You can see the tensioner assembly uh, socket or spot where it goes. So this one's 8 millimeter. 
These two are 10 millimeter. There's another bolt that goes in here that holds on the oil dipstick tube. When you pull the oil dipstick tube out of this spot right here, it's important that you put some type of a plug or a piece of paper towel or something to keep things from falling into the engine. It's a lot easier to keep debris out of the engine than to have to deal with that debris after it's coursing through the engine. Once your belt's onto this point, you can go ahead and pull off this little clip here. And the moment that you do, this is going to expand and push on the tensioner. And then you're going to have tension on both sides of the belt. Remember this was loose before. So that's why you want to gather all the tension onto this side. A lot of other timing belts will have a pin that you pull. This one has a little bracket. Once your belt tensioner has been uh, applied, deployed, or whatever, I always call them grenade tensioners with a pin because it's like a grenade. You pull the pin and then look out. You can pull the rest of your uh, clips off of there. These look like something fancy if you don't work in an office, but these are just paper clips. They're paper stack clips that you get at Office Max or Staples or wherever. So you can double check all your timing marks, uh, check the tension at all points of the belt. If there's any point that you find that you've got something that's loose, uh, you can rotate the crank clockwise and it'll pull all the slack to this port here. I actually do that ahead of time. Remember at the beginning of the video, where I say that I have these lined up before I take the old belt off, I have them slightly counterclockwise. The reason why I do that is once I get the belt on, uh, I'll go ahead and get everything pretty snugged up, and then I'll rotate the belt with a special tool that I made to make it. And you can use your harmonic balancer and the bolt that holds it in, but the special tool is a lot easier. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But then you rotate it onto the marks and that automatically takes all of the slack out of the belt as long as these are clipped with those clips I showed you. It puts all the slack uh, on the tensioner part over here. So this is the special tool. It looks like a socket. You can actually buy these. I'll see if I can find one and put a link in the description. But what I did is I cut the center of a harmonic balancer out of a failed Honda Accord and then I welded a socket to the back end of that. So now I've got a socket and a ratchet where I can put it on there and not have to worry about putting the harmonic balancer and the bolt back in. You have to take this off in a certain order. As you look at the timing cover here, you'll notice that there's a lip. That lip's covered over the top by the cam covers. And so those have to come off first. Once you get those off, then you gotta pull the harmonic balancer and then this comes off. You can't pull the motor mount bracket because it's got a lip on it too, you can see here. So the order of operations again, pull the top ones off for the cam wheels then pull the bottom cover off behind the harmonic balancer and then pull off this motor mount. Motor mounts 14 millimeter bolts. Make sure you use something with some leverage when you crack these free. You have steel bolts that are in aluminum. Electrolysis causes them to cold weld such that you gotta break that in order to get them started. This is the setup that I use. It's a Craftsman with a flex neck. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. If you want, you can check that out. One other small trick that I do is I drain the engine block when I go to do this. This is like kind of one of those bonus things. When you look behind the exhaust manifold here, you can see a big 17 millimeter bolt with a big washer face on it. That's the one to pull out. Don't expect it to be easy. The last thing I'll tell you on these is that these bolts get really stuck. The reason being is you've got this washer with a large circumference that really bears down on the outside rim. It's kind of cupped. You can see it only touches on this outside perimeter. And then the bolt has an additional uh, flange or whatever that goes against the washer that creates even more surface contact so when this thing binds up it really binds up and rusts that way what I do is I use a torque and I heat up just the outside edge I set the acetylene to really low just enough to maybe get an 8 inch flame and then I apply oxygen until I have a quarter inch blue flame at the tip of the torch when you do that you don't have a lot of extra fire that blows out from the side here uh, what that does, if you look here, it puts a little burn mark on it, but you look underneath, when it's under pressure, it kind of changes it a little bit. You can see a line right here that goes around to that side that corresponds with where I torched it. It causes it to let go on one side, and then your impact gun can handle it the rest of the way. Another thing that you can do is bear in mind, with the belt routing, it turns clockwise. This also turns clockwise. If you put a socket on this and hold it, and it turns clockwise, in effect, you're turning this counterclockwise. You can put a 19 millimeter, three quarter inch socket on this with a breaker bar, brace it against the ground or a jack stand, crank the starter over, and use the starter motor to crank this bolt free. 
it'll crack, it'll be loud, it may break your socket, but that's the one way you can do it. Another way is to just spend a ton of money on an expensive impact gun that's strong enough to handle it. While you have this off, be sure to check this for cracking. If you have excessive cracking, uh, the rubber that holds between this ring and the inner part can fail. Um, if you find a lot of cracking or if you can make the outside ring come off a little bit, then place a harmonic balancer before it just has that ring fall off going down the road. Rubber fails, rots, gets old, uh, seals, wipers, tires, everything does it. If it's rubber, you know, give it another look. Another thing to look at is these front motor mounts. They often fail on these things. Here's some of the things that I do to clear up some space and make it easier to work in here. The ABS pump you'll find is unbolted. That little teeny bit of wiggle room from pulling the bolts here, here, and here, just little 10 millimeter ones, makes it possible to pull the rest of the motor mount up and out of here that much easier without stressing anything else like this wire harness. You'll notice that I've got this side all pulled out. That gives me some room to reach in this way when I do the water pump. Basically taking a little time and pulling things out now makes everything a lot easier. The cruise control, I've got the vacuum line pulled off. I've got it unplugged and unbolted. And the only thing that's left is the throttle cable. And I've just got this set clear out of the way back here. You can see that it's held in by a bolt here and another one there. You have to be careful with the vacuum line. It plugs into this plastic nipple. Plastic gets old. This is a 2000 and I'm doing this in 2017. This car is probably in all likelihood 16, 17 years old. Rubber breaks down. That's why we replace timing belts. Uh, but plastic can get pretty brittle too, so watch out for that. So when you're doing the motor mount, uh, there's two belts that are trapped by it. One is your timing belt and the other is the power steering belt that comes to where the power steering is going to be right here over top. Uh, so make sure to really make sure that if your power steering belt's bad, you just replace it. Um, I leave all the bolts in this while I'm transferring it in or out, even this bottom one down here. Uh, that makes things easier. Uh, another thing is that the water pump is trapped behind this mount and then there's a little 10 millimeter bolt that holds this little plastic bracket on there for the wire harness. You can see it's got a little play to it. You got to pull the power steering pump to get to this effectively and that's why the power steering pumps up here. When you pull the power steering reservoir out it clips onto this little bracket. See the little shelf and then this tab locks it in. So you just pull back on the tab and pull it up and that'll get that off. I unbolt the little wire harness bracket here just to give a little bit more slack and then this has to come off because your other bracket is clear somewhere else. And that's another thing with rubber. Check your motor mounts, make sure that they're okay. You look at this one, everything looks fine, but remember they're kind of like a Fig Newton cookie. You know, it's not until you put a little bit of a stress or a flex on them that they actually show any wear or cracking. We'll take that and flex it. Watch out for the plastic line. No, I'm not crushing it. This car's got almost 300,000 miles. It's over the 200,000 mile mark and it's on its way. Another little, little thing, uh, the power steering pressure hose back here. Just unclip it and then that'll give you the slack you need to set it up on the intake manifold. Uh, I'm going to tell you this, you're going to forget anyway. There's a metal plate that holds the timing belt on. There's marks on it that show which side has teeth and which side are out. But that's got to go between this cover and the belt to hold it on. Eventually the harmonic balancer is going to pin that plate down. You can see the plate through there. It's just kind of gold colored. It'll pin that plate down and help hold the timing belt on. Uh, this little guy in here is 8 millimeter. You don't have to pull the pulley, but it wouldn't hurt either. But you can see you can get an 8 millimeter in there if it's a quarter inch drive. Just like that. And then you've got a 10 millimeter one above and below. I'll get I'll give you a little peek there. You can see the other two. So here's what the dipstick tube looks like installed. You can see the bolt that puts it in right there. What I do to get that bolt in there is I'll take the bolt and put it in a paper towel like this and then that holds the bolt in place while I drive it home. This here is the old pile of parts. The tensioner I replaced, the water pump which was leaking like a son of a gun, the timing belt, the idler pulley as well as the tensioner assembly for the tensioner pulley. Uh, you replace these things you're just going to be in good shape. The book time on this job is 5.4 hours with air conditioning. It's 5 hours for the V6 plus 4 or add 4 for the AC. And the top mount power steering pump that adds another 0.4 hours or something like that. Uh, if you want to know how much these kits cost I'll leave a link in the description and you'll be able to see what the current price is for that. Alright moment of truth. Will it blend? It will not blend, but it will.
will start. That's what we want anyway. If you follow these tips, you'll be in great shape. Uh, but remember, um, ultimately, I can't control the dissemination of this information. I always want to say that sounds so smart. Thanks for watching my video. Uh, if you like it, be sure to click like, share it with somebody who has a Honda, and uh, hopefully it'll help them out and give them an idea of what they're getting into. When you go to get a quote on a V6 Honda Accord like this, to get the timing belt and water pump replaced, it may shock you, or if somebody's complaining about it, send them the video, and they'll get an idea for why it costs them what it does.